Okay, well, it looks like we're live on Facebook. So welcome everyone. We're glad that you joined us here on this chilly January afternoon. My name is Ted Blank and I am with Travel Leaders here in the Twin Cities. And we are very excited to have a special guest with us today, Joe Sieb with Princess Cruises. And Joe is gonna take us on a journey to Alaska. He's gonna talk a little bit about what is new with Princess Cruises and um, he's going to talk about cruising both in 2021 and 2022. So welcome, Joe. We'll turn the presentation over to you. Thank you, Ted. I think we're going to probably uh, hide our videos here in a moment. Yep. But just to kind of kick things off, thank you for having me, uh, Ted. And uh, everybody, thank you for joining as well. So um, just to kind of kick things off, um, Ted and his company, Travel Leaders, has for years been a great partner selling Princess's Alaska product. And uh, it's, uh, it's with uh, uh, pride that I work with them on a regular basis. Our product in Alaska for years has been rated the number one in Alaska by the industry, which really speaks a great deal to us and uh, all that we offer. Um, every story with Princess really starts uh, Ted, I'm just temporarily froze here. Let me see. Uh, there we go. Every story with Princess really starts with what we call our shared purpose and core values. So I want to kind of uh, brief everybody on those, what it means. It really uh, provides us with our true north direction. Uh, and our shared purpose as a company, right in the words of our president, are, are to share our world, in this case, Alaska share our hearts, protect our earth, which really means reducing the environmental footprint in the world, and to create lasting memories. And those last two words are the real key to everything we do. We're pretty convinced, uh, and I think Ted will agree with me, that you're gonna enjoy sitting down with somebody, with travel leaders, making a booking, making all of your plans. You're gonna enjoy getting there. You're gonna enjoy your cruise. You're gonna enjoy everything Alaska has to offer. The shore excursions, the scenery, the glaciers, uh, all of the onboard activity. And when you come home and share those memories with your friends and neighbors and family, then we know we've done what we've set out to do. Then we've accomplished our goal, which is to create these lasting memories. Uh, and so to that, uh, they're kind of led by our core values of protect, respect, and connect. And just briefly, I just want to share that our core values have been a part of our company, our fabric for a long time. And to protect really means that we put safety first and we always do the right thing. And then uh, moving over to connect, our goal is really to connect with guests and each other and deliver genuine, happy vacations that exceed expectations. So that's how we really uh, come to work every morning. These are our goals. This is what we're, uh, what we're up to. All right, Ted, what day is today? Well, today is Tuesday, Joe, but I think it also Tuesday, happens to be national, to it than that, right? national plan of vacation day. So that, it's a pretty exciting time actually. Uh, and uh, I did a little bit of research. Uh, Princess is celebrating National Plan of Vacation Day, uh, which starts today. We're celebrating it through Friday. We have a bit of an enhanced reduced deposit for bookings made during this period of time. But studies tell us that I think it's over 50% of people do not use their typical uh, PTO personal time off each year. So that's... Uh, why an organization came up with National Plan of Vacation Day. So we at Princess know just from our own experience and our own studies that we derive more happiness from anticipating the vacation than the actual vacation. So if you can, as an individual, sit, just sit back and kind of remember one of your past vacations and how much excitement there was leading up to it. Um, so by all means, planning a vacation either this summer or next summer to Alaska uh, will really help add to the, uh, this anticipation phase of your planning and your vacation. It really adds an awful lot to your vacation. 
Absolutely. So anyway, a couple of housekeeping items. I'm gonna share a few thoughts about Alaska vacationing in general. We'll walk through what we call a sample cruise tour, which is cruising between Vancouver and Anchorage, and then doing a tour north of Anchorage or going in the opposite direction where you begin your trip by flying to Alaska, Anchorage typically or Fairbanks. And then from there touring Alaska, the interior, which is the part north of Anchorage and then cruising south to Vancouver. So we'll kind of walk through a sample trip. Just know that typically I go northbound in my example, but you can go either direction. Then we'll go through some frequently asked questions but to kind of kick off things, I just want to talk about our return to service. We're anticipating and planning for a full Alaska season and, and uh, you know, meeting all of the uh, requirements set forth by the CDC. Of course, they're changing and there's lots of uh, new information each day. And we're excited to take in all of that information. To begin with, the health and safety standards that we've uh, drawn up, and they're clearly in development, and I just need to be clear with that, that they may change as new information uh, presents itself. But we've divided up our health and safety into six categories. The number one is enhanced screening before a staggered boarding. And I'll talk more about that staggered boarding uh, after a little bit here. Uh, enhanced environmental sanitation throughout the public areas and staterooms, responsible physical distancing, uh, kind of managing the flow of the ship. And we have some new ways to do that, which is rather exciting. Uh, and when physical distancing can't be maintained and is still needed, then masks will be required. Medical care, uh, we have a, a highly trained medical staff, including doctors and nurses. Um, and uh, they have, of course, experience and uh, they'll have a broad range of training of all, all conditions, in, including COVID-19. Uh, ventilation on board the ships will feature enhanced air filtration systems uh, with upgraded HVAC systems. And the air in the public areas and staterooms will be replaced every five to six minutes. So it's a neat, new, exciting things. And then lastly, or number six anyway, uh, uh, we're gonna provide a, a, a local safe shoreside experience. So we're working with all of the local uh, partners uh, at, on shore, both uh, uh, in the port areas and with our shore excursion vendors. All right, great. Medallion class cruising is something that's uh, newer than uh, to most of us. Medallion class cruising is where, and, and when we uh, return to service, our entire fleet will be medallion class ships. If you've cruised with Princess before, you've heard of it. If you haven't, briefly what it is, is that we're going to uh, provide you with the ability to pre-register uh, for your cruise pre-check-in before you ever get to the pier. And that's done by virtue of uh, downloading an app called the Medallion Class app, filling in some information, including scanning your passport. And then when you arrive at the pier, you're ready to board the ship. There's no check-in. So this is just going to help enhance the, uh, the touchless boarding process that we're offering on board the ship. So briefly, uh, here's what the medallion actually might look like. Uh, the little round uh, metal uh, medallion comes either in a uh, plastic case with a lanyard or you can purchase a, a wristband to put it on or wear it on a necklace. There's a number of different ways to wear it or you can just carry it in your pocket like I do, okay? When you, when you arrive the pier, in the upper right-hand corner, you see this a uh, lovely couple. They just arrived the pier, they're checking in. By virtue of their medallion, the princess staff knows exactly who they are. You show your passport, you board the ship. Uh, when you arrive your cabin door, your door opens up automatically for you or unlocks, I should say. You turn the latch, you enter your door. The most practical, enter your room, the most practical part of uh, 
of uh, the application that I found is finding each other, your shipmates, your travel mates while you're cruising. So just by virtue of the app on your smart device, you can determine where your travel cabin mate is. So uh, uh, unless they don't wanna be found, they can turn off that part, right? So uh, it's really a neat new enhancement games that you can play on, on your smart device, the best Wi-Fi at sea, and then the ability to order drinks or, or other food items uh, poolside or wherever you're at on board the ship. Some enhanced features are now that you're going to be able to choose your own boarding time in 15 minute intervals. So when you get off your plane and you're ready to board the ship, you can enter your staggered uh, boarding time choice. You'll ride the ship, you go right through security uh, and uh, show your passport and, and you board the ship. Instead of having to uh, all attend a mustard drill, safety drill on board the ship, you're now gonna be able to watch a video on your smart device and then go to the muster station and simply get checked in. So it's a really neat new enhancement. Uh, Ted, would you agree that the mustard drill is probably not everybody's favorite thing to do when they board the ship? I would agree. It's fun to get dressed up in a life jacket, but I think this will be a welcome enhancement. <clears throat> the health questionnaire will be online, touchless payments throughout the ship. And the newest, most exciting feature of all is real-time visibility into venue capacity. So you can be sitting at dinner this is, these are the plans. And you decide at the last minute, you know what? It might be fun to go to the theater or it might be fun to go to the Explorer's Lounge. You can check real time into the capacity uh, that's still available in those venues. So really neat new features. All right, uh, North to Alaska is a slogan we use for our product in Alaska. Uh, we know for sure that uh, you want to see glaciers, you want to experience and, and really engage with the destination. You can see this uh, young couple in the lower right hand corner. Um, they're holding real life sled dog puppies that a, a real life dog musher boarded the ship in Skagway with and conducted a short little presentation in, in the atrium and brought his sled dog puppies on board the ship. So we have real life experiences like that available to you. Uh, in the left-hand side here, we see a picture of uh, Marjorie Glacier, which is deep in the Glacier Bay National Park. From our studies, we know that glaciers is the number one reason most of us say we wanna to go to see Alaska or go to Alaska. And so uh, speaking to that, on every cruise tour between Vancouver and Anchorage, we offer two opportunities to see glaciers. Uh, and as you're going north, for example, you'll spend a full day in Glacier Bay National Park. You can see these folks out on deck. There's plenty of public deck area in Alaska to, to view the glaciers comfortably. And then the number two reason we would like to go to Alaska is to see Denali Park and Mount McKinley itself, okay? And I misspoke, it's actually known now as Mount Denali or just plain Denali. The name has officially changed back from Mount McKinley to Denali. On every cruise tour, we do offer uh, an opportunity to uh, stay at, at uh, one of our two lodges in the Denali area. And the number three reason most of us wanna go to Alaska is really to see the wildlife. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see uh, our friend, uh, 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 Doll Sheep. Uh, it, when you're in Denali, almost for sure, if you go into the park on one of the tours, you'll see Doll Sheep moving clockwise, uh, Moose and bear seem to be kind of the wild cards. I've oftentimes seen bear right from the ship while cruising in Glacier Bay National Park. Make sure you bring your binoculars with you. This would be one of those reasons you want to have them with. Uh, caribou, I can just about guarantee you'll see caribou on a cruise tour. And then in the center there are Alaskan wolves uh, that hopefully you'll be able to see from a distance, right? And then, of course, as kind of a bonus, uh, whales, of course, is really a highlight for, for all of us. This is a picture of a whale breaching, right, uh, um, most likely uh, taken from one of the small ship experiences out of Juneau, okay? And uh, seeing whales, of course, is dramatic, it's exciting, and it's one of the top reasons we like to go as well. 
All right. A couple of things about Princess in general, then we'll kind of walk through a cruise tour. Uh, Ted asked me before we started, when's the first time we went to Alaska? Uh, he didn't know I had my PowerPoint here, but we've been cruising Alaska <laughs> since 1969. We were found in 1965. We're headquartered in Los Angeles. And if anybody in the, in the crowd is old enough to remember the TV show, The Love Boat, we were the backdrop for that show. We had two ships named Pacific and Island Princess, uh, ships that have uh, since been sold. And we've, uh, we have a new Island Princess that's uh, not the original, but it's a new ship. But anyway, the backdrop for the TV show uh, was based on two princess ships uh, cruising the Mexican Riviera. We offer this incredibly enriching experience, unique rail service. When you uh, leave the, the Van Port of Vancouver and seven days later arrive Whittier, the port city for Anchorage, you disembark right there at the pier and you board a motor coach. If you were cruising without going on a land tour, you go to the Anchorage airport, fly home, or you walk across the train platform directly on board the ship. Okay, or excuse me, directly on board the train from, from the ship. Uh, so it's really a convenient uh, uh, transfer. And then our lodges, of course, are unique to our customers. They were all built for Alaska uh, touring with one or two night stays. And then our employees are really second to none. Most of our employees in Alaska itself are local Alaskans as well. And that really helps speak to uh, how knowledgeable they are of the product. All right, kind of walking through a, a couple of sample trips. We do offer a sailing for seven days from Seattle. Fly to Seattle, board the ship. You cruise north, as far north as Skagway with one glacier viewing opportunity, either at Dawes Glacier or Glacier Bay National Park, and then cruising back to Seattle. It's a great itinerary. I've done this a number of times myself, and I hope to again this coming summer or, or in the summer of 22 as well with my own family. Um, and then we don't go as far north as Anchorage, so you can't do a cruise tour from this itinerary. But from here, uh, if you chose to do a cruise tour, you would leave from Vancouver and cruise straight north to uh, Anchorage, arriving Anchorage seven days later. We cruise through the inside passage, just kind of following that red line from Vancouver uh, through the inside passage up to Ketchikan, Juneau, Skagway, a full day cruising in Glacier Bay National Park, and then a second glacier viewing opportunity in College Fjord. Just an absolutely wonderful experience. You can also do the trip in the exact opposite direction. And then from here, you'd get off the ship board the train in most cases, and from here, tour north of Anchorage, uh, possibly as far north as, as Fairbanks or maybe uh, to Denali only. Okay. So uh, in most cases, you're gonna fly to Vancouver. The ship departs right from downtown Vancouver, which is clearly one of the most beautiful cities in the world, uh, certainly in North America. If you have a, an opportunity to add a day or two to your vacation and spend a day or two extra in Vancouver, well worth the time. It's a pretty exciting destination. You board the ship, the ship sets sail, and we cruise through the inside passage the entire first day. It's a great, uh, it's great that the inside passage is where it is. It's a wonderful way to start your trip. There's scenery on either side of the ship. We don't get off the ship for the entire first day, really the first 30 hours, uh, but rather we just enjoy all of the scenery and the excitement and almost for sure we'll see whales. We have an onboard naturalist that's on board the ship the entire seven days and they will conduct a narrative throughout the, the trip and uh, hopefully point out those whales. Then we arrive Ketchikan. Ketchikan is a port of uh, really about 12 or 14,000 people. It's kind of a fishing village of sorts. It's a real neat port. Uh, I've done just self-guided walking tours here a number of times. There's a few exceptions where rather than catch a can, we call on an area called Icy Straight Point. Uh, and there's lots of different things to do here. And I think Ted had, uh, 
had an idea of what his favorite thing to do in Ketchikan is. Yeah, well, your, your photo kind of captures a, um, the, the totem poles in the Ketchikan area are really beautiful. And there are guided excursions that will take you to an outdoor area where you can see the totem poles kind of in their natural environment. Or there's a totem pole museum where you can go see them up close but inside. And my memory of Ketchikan was actually seeing the salmon um, running up the stream to where they go back to give birth. Um, and so there's a stream that runs right through the center of Ketchikan and we get to see the salmon running right through town. You can almost walk across the river. The salmon are so thick sometimes. Yes, yes. Ketchikan's a great port just to get off the ship and walk around on your own end. Really a, a neat port of call. Uh, one time I was there, I stood and talked to a guy washing his pickup while I was on my self-guided tour, I talked to him for about an hour. Everybody has their personal choices of what they like to do in the ports. And one thing I always like to do is really to engage with the locals. And Alaska really uh, speaks to that and allows that. Then we're in Juneau, the next port of call. If you're going north, like we are in our sample, Juneau is the first opportunity to see a glacier. And uh, about 10 miles out of town is a glacier called the Mendenhall Glacier. It's rather famous. You can see it by taking a motor coach trip on a tour to go out to see it, see it from the visitor center. You can take a helicopter ride that will land out on top of the glacier. You can see the glacier there on the left-hand side of the screen. So really a neat opportunity. If you're coming south on your trip, this is your last opportunity to see a glacier. Libby Riddles depicted on the right, or that's actually her, uh, boards the ship during each of our ports of call in Juneau and conducts a presentation into a jam-packed theater on her sled dog exploits. Uh, and as the first female Iditarod champion ever, it, uh, it really is a compelling story. And then whale watching uh, on a small boat excursion is another likely activity to consider in Juneau. Okay, it's a really neat one. Now we have a program uh, in Alaska called North to Alaska. And if you ever see a, uh, in our daily newspaper, if you see a little logo next to a, an activity that's got our North to Alaska logo, it means it's something that speaks just to the local area. We have one that's a fishing shore excursion. There's our North to Alaska logo. And you might go on a deep sea fishing excursion that's called, that's part of the North to Alaska program called Cook My Catch, okay? So this uh, uh, fella and uh, probably his granddaughter are fishing. They're deep sea fishing. They're probably salmon fishing. And they uh, might catch a few fish. And they can decide and tell the, the fishing vendor that they would like to have their fish prepared for them on board the ship. And uh, it's brought out to them at dinner. Now, while uh, this is not an actual fish that I caught, this platter is an actual platter of fish that my family did catch and had it prepared for us on board the ship, which anybody can do, of course. Uh, and the, uh, this picture really doesn't do it uh, justice. That platter is about four feet, over, an oval of four feet. A separate table is brought out to a, your dining room table and the head waiter came over and served it. So really quite a neat experience. Again, there's a, there's a lot of envy in the dining room from the folks who didn't go on that excursion when they see everybody enjoying their fresh catch. That's right. That's exactly right. If you look closely, you can tell there's pink salmon and coho salmon both. And uh, both equally as good. So really quite exciting. All right. Then Skagway is our next port of call. Skagway is really a dramatic port. It's only 700 people. Uh, I've read in the past where there's no doctor or pharmacist in, in Skagway itself, but they can build a rail car from scratch. So it's really interesting and unique. Um, Ken, take it away with Skagway. Isn't that a Yeah, big... I would say that one of the must do activities when you're in the Inside Passage is to take the White Pass and Yukon Railroad, which is that train you can see here on the slide. Um, I've been to Switzerland. I've taken some of the Alpine trains there and this one absolutely rivals it in scenery and the story of how they built it, what, in the 
18, 1880s, 1890s, when everything was done by hand is incredible as well. So you can actually literally get off the ship, walk across the pier and board the train right there. Very cool experience. The train climbs 3,000 feet in elevation and at about 2,500 feet, the train crew will announce that if you look out over your left, uh, uh, you can see down through, through the mountain pass, you can see your ship down in the pier. So it's really a neat experience. Incredible scenery. It takes you to frightening heights. You can also just stroll around downtown Skagway. It's really a, a frontier-like town, really a beautiful port call. Uh, here's a, just a personal photo of the ship leaving Skagway. Skagway itself, the port is deep into this picture around to the right-hand side of that last uh, mountain that's kind of coming out into the water. Uh, just a beautiful picture. I urge everybody to go up to one of the top decks to the rear of the ship about 30 minutes after you've left Skagway and this will be your view. Quite surreal looking, quite dramatic. Then we get to visit Glacier Bay National Park. So we have a park ranger that boards the ship. The ship enters the bay about 5, 5.30 in the morning. Park ranger boards the ship and spends the entire day entertaining our customers. It's really a dramatic day. Uh, we go deep into Glacier Bay National Park and we, we uh, spend time uh, viewing Marjorie Glacier. Uh, and then as you continue north, there's another several hours of cruising in College Fjord, which is the lower picture uh, of, on the screen with uh, up to two or three and sometimes four glaciers within your view at any one time. And then in the upper right hand corner is Hubbard Glacier. Uh, Hubbard Glacier we view coming south along with Glacier Bay National Park. Hubbard Glacier, if you can picture, when you're facing Hubbard Glacier, she's six miles wide at the water. It's a tidewater glacier, which simply means that when the ice breaks off, it, the ice falls in the water like this uh, calving uh, picture of the Hubbard Glacier calving here. Hubbard Glacier starts inland 76 miles. And if the ice that's calving was ice that began 76 miles inland, it would be 400 year old ice. So it's really quite dramatic. The statistics and the massiveness of uh, everything in Alaska is really quite amazing. And then here's just a, a couple more photos of visiting Marjorie Glacier and Glacier Bay National Park. Both pictures are the same glacier. So when you look at it from different perspectives, you'll, you'll notice the difference. So um, Marjorie Glacier is two or 300 feet above the water, that deep in the water as well. When you're right up to it, uh, sometimes you feel like you can reach out and touch it all. Okay? And then the ship's captain might announce that we're a half a mile away. So it's really an exciting day uh, visiting uh, in Glacier Bay National Park. Then we uh, arrive Whittier, the port city for Anchorage. It's about 65 miles from the airport. If you're cruising without touring, you would go to the airport and fly home. If you're touring, in most cases, you board the train. There are some other options as well. And from here, you go right through Anchorage, essentially, go right by Anchorage. And then in most cases, you go directly to our Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge, which is the staging point for any tour into the, to the park itself. Uh, the lodge is just uh, roughly a mile from the entrance to the park. And you can uh, typically spend one or two nights here, depending on the tour itinerary that you choose. This uh, couple uh, standing on the deck here, is on, they're on the back side of the lodge and they're standing above on, on, the, on the deck above the Nanana River. If you want to do any whitewater rafting, here's the place to do it. It's really an exhilarating 11 mile whitewater raft. And if somebody in your party wants to go and somebody wants to stay back, they can see you go right by. Uh, <laughs> really a neat experience. And then this is also um, where you would do a tour into the park as well, okay? And this is where likelihood of seeing doll sheep uh, is pretty high. Uh, or you might go directly to our Mount McKinley Lodge, uh, uh, 
which is the only public lodge in Alaska that potentially has a view of Mount McKinley. So if you see the deck on the front side of the picture here of the Mount McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge, you'll see that uh, 41 miles away is the mountain. If the weather cooperates, here's the view of the mountain that you'll see. Doesn't that look beautiful, stunning. It's really quite dramatic and rugged looking. Um, and the other public area that potentially has a view of the mountain as well is this tree house built on our Mount McKinley Lodge grounds. And if you, uh, if anybody has seen the TV show, reality show, Treehouse Masters, this is uh, a treehouse that was built by the group from the Treehouse Masters. Ted, have you ever seen that show by chance? I have, I have, and it, it, the episode where they build this at the, the Mount McKinley Princess is really cool, and the view is just incredible. It's, it's hard to describe in words. So if you're lucky enough for the weather cooperates, here's that view again, right from the, the right from uh, the treehouse. All right. All right, then we have another lodge called the Kenai Princess Lodge, uh, kind of south uh, west of Anchorage where we motor coach to. Uh, and it's oftentimes compared to uh, the boundary waters of Minnesota, uh, where it's a little different type of experience and uh, each person is in their own separate cabin with a wood burning stove. So there are about 20 different land itineraries to choose from. Some will stay one night at the Denali Lodge, one night at the Mount McKinley Lodge, and maybe one night at the Kenai Lodge or some other combination. Then we have another lodge eight hours uh, east of Denali called the Copper River Lodge, which also offers a, a bit more of a wilderness experience. So a lot of different choices. When you sit down with one of the travel advisors with uh, travel leaders, they'll go through and, and help you make a decision on which itinerary is the right one for you. Or you may go all the way north to Fairbanks. Okay? A lot of different combinations. Okay. And then just um, kind of going through as we begin to wrap up some frequently asked questions. Oftentimes it's is asked, when's the best time to go? And which direction is the best direction to go? Okay. So uh, our season is typically mid, mid May to mid September. And there's really some extra reason to go each time of the year. If you go in the early part of the season, there's still snow in the lower elevations and, and Alaska is cool and crisp like you've ex you probably expect it to be. If you go toward mid-June into July, the days are, of course, are the longest they are of the whole year. Uh, and if you and the growing season has been in full bloom. Uh, Ted, before we started, you, you talked about the growing season in Alaska a little bit. Yeah, it is. It is incredible what a short, short growing season and 24 hours of daylight will do to uh, annuals and vegetables. And I've, I've never seen bigger annuals or vegetables than I saw in Fairbanks in, in July. And then if you go toward the fall, there'll be some fall colors as well. And then in terms of which direction to go, uh, either direction is really great. Uh, there might be a practical reason to go one direction or the other based on maybe air scheduling or a personal reason that you want to go one direction or the other. But when you visit with your travel advisor, with one of the staff at Travel Leaders, they're going to kind of help you walk through that and help you make and assist in making that decision. Okay. Everybody's kind of got their favorite direction, but either direction is really great. Packing and dress. To pack for your trip, you really pack the dress in layers. And I often like to say, uh, if the audience is uh, from Minnesota or understands our Minnesota weather, you pack the dress like you're going up north, as we say, in April or October. And that doesn't mean cold, it doesn't mean warm, it really just simply means we really don't know what the weather's gonna be like. So you pack the dress in layers and you'll be all set. Most of us from here, I don't think really bring uh, what we would consider winter clothing. Uh, you will see some of that, but typically if you pack the dress in layers, you'll be all set. On board the ship during the day, 
Uh, you people are dressed just like you'd expect them to be dressed in Alaska with khaki pants and blue jeans and sweatshirts. And then at night, the dress code is simply smart casual, meaning everybody looks nice throughout the, the uh, five nights of the five evenings of the, of the cruise. And then two nights are called formal. And on the formal nights, the men would want to have a, a dark coat and tie and women would want to have uh, something uh, along those lines as well. Okay, so just dress like you would for any evening uh, night on the top. Additional spending after you've made your purchase, after you've decided when you want to go, which direction, which type of cabin, uh, and maybe whether you're going to buy insurance or not, shore excursions or excursion, additional excursions from the uh, lodges would be additional. Dining at the lodges is additional as well as well as on the train and any specialty dining on board the ship. Everybody has to have a passport. Ted, what's it, how long is it taking to get a passport right now? Well, it takes about six weeks. They're almost back to normal processing times now. So if you don't have your passport, or if you do, I recommend you pull it out and take a look at it and make sure it's good for at least six months from the last date you plan to travel. Uh, to not get caught having to pay for an expedited, uh, updated passport. But by all means, just make sure you're, you're ready there. And as far as recommendations, again, it seems like a long ways off, either uh, later this summer or 2022. But by all means, uh, once we're all back to normal, Alaska is going to really lead the way in cruise sales. All right. And then we have a great promotion going on right now through May, or excuse me, March 2nd. Uh, for bookings through March 2nd, we have a promotion called Best Sale Ever. And it includes uh, an, a stateroom upgrade. Uh, and uh, there's a full description of it uh, on our website. And then specialty dining for two, which is another added value as well along with our standard fare program that includes our beverage package, including tips for the beverage package, unlimited Wi-Fi, the best Wi-Fi at sea, and gratuities. So it's a, a phenomenal uh, promotion going on right now. And uh, if you're not able to book before March 2nd, uh, the second part of this promotion uh, will still apply, the gratuities, Wi-Fi, and beverage package. And rather than trying to, to memorize this, you know, when you again visit with a travel advisor, they're going to be able to help you, help you out there as well. And then, Tan, if you want to speak just a little bit to um, the exclusive travel leaders um, cruise tour. Yeah, so there are a lot of advantages to working with one of the travel advisors here at Travel Leaders. And one of those is that you have access to an exclusive cruise tour. Um, and so this is only available through a travel leaders agency. And it is it is very similar to the tour that Joe described. Um, it includes uh, one night in Anchorage, one night at the Mount McKinley Princess Lodge, where you have the view of the uh, mountain from the south, and two nights at the Denali Princess Lodge in the center of Denali. Um, and it is an escorted tour, and it is um, include some additional meals and other benefits. And it's only available on selected departures and it's only available through travel leaders. Um, so we'd be happy to send you more information on that. Um, and if the dates fit with what you're looking for, it's a great added value to consider purchasing on your cruise. Very good, very good, exciting. And then um, <clears throat> we know there's a lot of uncertainty out there right now. And we have a program called Cruise with Confidence which is kind of broken up into three categories, uh, uh, broken into three categories. Book with confidence, our prince's promise, we make it right, and our uh, enhanced uh, prince's vacation protection. And I invite you to visit our website or work with one of the travel advisors to, to, uh, to review it and see the details. So we have some uh, added enhancements to the Princess Insurance Program, and some uh, booking flexibility as well. And if anybody has uh, heritage with the military, make sure you make that known. 
we have a great uh, princess uh, military benefit for active, retired, and disabled veterans. There's some criteria that must be met, uh, but uh, we can uh, make sure that uh, if you do have that heritage, that uh, we'll send that into princess and make sure you uh, receive your shipboard credit. In the case of an Alaska seven-day voyage, it's a hundred dollars shipboard credit for that military person. So it's really a nice salute to the military. All right, it's a beautiful picture. This uh, couple here are simply standing out on deck, enjoying and visiting uh, Marjorie Glacier in Glacier Bay National Park. You can see there with, on the left-hand side of the glacier there, there was some recent calving. And uh, whoever is taking this photo was lucky enough to actually uh, have their camera focused right at the right time to see that calving, okay? It's too late to uh, grab your camera and get it ready once the calving starts. So you wanna have it ready at all times. Ted, do we have any questions that have come up? <clears throat> I don't see any questions in the Q&A, but if folks do have questions, oh, one just popped in there. So let's um, see, we have some questions about um, children and ages for children, the, the children's program, and then um, how the amenities work for children. Well, we have a, a, a great kids program uh, <clears throat> that's much more than just a daycare program but we have a, a, a kid center where we've divided up the kids into age brackets of three to seven, uh, eight to 12 and 13 to 17 with appropriate activities scheduled for each. Uh, in the case of Alaska, it's really an engaging program and there'll be times, especially when we're in Glacier Bay National Park, for example, if there's enough kids on the ship, there'll be a park ranger that boards the ship just to spend the day with the three to seven year olds. And you'll see them walking around on board the ship all holding hands with the park ranger uh, sharing with them exactly what they're experiencing. And so uh, the, the difference between Alaska and many other destinations in the world, whether it be on land or sea, is that it's very engaging for everybody of all ages. Yeah, and the question, I think the question about the specific amenities and how that works, um, that's something that's that's best discussed with your advisor because it can depend on first and second person in the stateroom and those types of things. Um, sure, sure. I will add that 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 brought up a really good point that we didn't address, which is um, kind of the the multi generational family and how Alaska is such an ideal destination for that. And I mean, my personal experience, we went, we took my whole family. We were ages, I think, seventy five down to six, and um, Everybody had a blast and I will never forget my six-year-old niece when she walked in and she saw the atrium on the ship for the first time, she came running back to the cabin and she said, wow, wow, come look at this. So some incredible memories can be made. It's probably the number one trend right now that we're seeing in our business is not only multi-generational travel, uh, which has been around for quite a while, but Alaska in particular. Yeah, so uh, again, about the kids, the kids program, the, the minimum age for the kids program is Three. Three, okay, so under three, um, there are no, no special programs for them. And obviously right. whatever is offered um, when sailings resume will be adjusted to reflect the, the COVID situation. Certainly. Yep, okay. All right, are there any other questions in the Q&A box? If not, um, Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, as a next step, we definitely recommend you reach out to your uh, Travel Leaders Travel Advisor. They would be more than happy to assist you with planning an Alaska vacation, either in 2021 or 2022. And the 2022 season is available and, and fully ready to book. So all the schedules are out there. Um, we'll follow up with an email with information on that uh, special Travel Leaders cruise tour that's available. And if you need help finding a travel advisor, you can just reply to that email and let me know and we'll get you hooked up with somebody and get started on planning the trip. So Joe, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate the tour to Alaska. Um, I'm ready to go. So I, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we'll be back, back and be able to be there sooner rather than later.
Thank you for having me, Ted, and thank you everybody for attending. Yep, thanks for joining us. Take care, bye.